We pick up odd jobs whenever we can to help fill our cruising kitty. While we're here in Grenada, our friend Thomas has some projects he needs help with. So we offered an apartment to Thomas up from New York City um, doing the bottom on his little fishing boat. So and yeah, it's we're gonna... not total charity, but... Not total charity, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Thomas is gonna pay us what he would pay, would have paid the... The yard. The yard. So how far down are you sanding? So from what I'm told, you're supposed to see the gel coat, which is this layer on top of the fiberglass of the hull. Um, you're supposed to see it peeking through, but you don't actually want to be sanding the gel coat and damaging it. So I'm going to sand until I start seeing color change. Bottom is sanded. After sanding is finished, we have the yard shake the paint. Not an apartment, not a boat. In any capacity. In any capacity, yeah. Strange. Yeah. So here goes on coat number one. I think we know what we're doing. We let the first coat dry for a few hours, then return to add a second coat of paint. So we're finished painting now, and we're having the boat um, lifted up on a traveler. Just happening back here, just so we can paint where the jack stands were. So we're gonna get into those spots now. Happened to your flip flop, honey? Broke. I broke at the worst time, yeah, huh? Good day. <laughs> After the bottom's done, it's back to the regular cruiser schedule. We've gotten into a nice little routine after being in Grenada for so long. In between working on Calico Skies, I found a local, inexpensive yoga studio, and Bill often joins Thomas for afternoon spearfishing trips. And sometimes, when I return home, there's even fish waiting for me. Oh, God. Pretty decent place. Great job, honey. My least favorite part of going spearfishing is having to fillet the fish. Should we talk about your battle scar first? Yeah, look at this wound. I got a battle wound. You should have seen the shark, though. <laughs> So back to the sugar fish. They're really hard to scale. A lot of people don't get involved with sugar fish for that reason, but they're really good. Um, they have, it's like an armor. armor yeah. It's not your, they look like fish scales, but and they are, but they're just really super, really super tough fish scales. We actually use a bread knife sometimes to get through. We're gonna get a lot of <laughs> feedback on this. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't film it. Filleting fish is not our forte. Forte. Any any tips would be help, helpful to me. Not really. Fish. Sophie, look. You see the fish. <laughs> you like the fish. <laughs> There's the trigger. There's water. That's why it's called a trigger fish. Yep. Clues with that little trigger. <laughs> Today, our office is the marina parking lot where our friend Thomas has left his Jeep. We're going to see if we can fix the rear window, which he hasn't had much luck getting fixed thus far. So we're doing this the same way we actually did our boat windows, which is... BHB tape by 3M. Right. And then we're gonna seal the outside edge. And that is this. Yeah. That stuff we're gonna tape, we're gonna dunk up inside here. We're gonna tape off this so we don't get it on the window when we're done. We'll make this work for Thomas. After we put a couple of hours in on Thomas's car, it's back to Calico Skies to keep chipping away at repairs. So our uh, vinegar pole top and lift did not survive the transatlantic. 
was just up doing some rig checks and found that this was hanging on by the last little threads. Uh, I'm not sure if I could end to end it, if it'll be long enough or I just need to replace it. End to end refers to the method of flipping the line so that the top becomes the bottom and vice versa. This helps distribute wear on the line to different spots to help prevent shave damage. Project just became probably an hour project at least because I have to go up the mast now. The messenger line I was using wasn't strong enough and it snapped. And so how are you going to retrieve something that's lost inside the mast? I'm, I'm going to get the fatter. I'm going to get a new line uh -huh. and I'm going to shove it down the top shiv of the mast uh -huh. and then it's going to be dangling inside the mast uh -huh. and I'm going to have to try to get a plier or wire or something, grab it wire hanger and then pull it oh, through. We've done this before. Yeah, yeah. We gotta try to fish it out. We're sailing buddies. He has this little bit of chain which will weigh down and weigh down from the top of the mess and then this uh, little pencil magnet that you can stick inside the hole, catch the magnet, and pull the messenger through. Hmm. This seems like a pretty good solution. Bill heads up the mast to feed the line down to Kenny at the base, who holds the magnet to help fish out the line from inside the mast. Do you mind if I film this, Kenny? Oh, this is great. <laughs> Kenny of Sailing Vessel Loon is a fellow cruiser we met while sailing down the U.S. coast, and we've run into him here in Grenada. Not surprising, because it's actually quite often we run into sailing friends all over the world. Update to our project on the topic of today. We bought some new line that we're going to run through the mast. Um, the old line, when I cut out the shape, was too short to go up and down the mast. So we're replacing it with a new line. Sophie, good girl. You guys ready for a little mm -hmm. adventure? You ready? We're headed on a road trip with our friends Thomas and Karen today. The plan is for the girls to swim and explore an island about a mile off Grenada's northeast shore, while the boys will do some spearfishing. Sandy Island at all. So I don't know why this is here, what it was used for. Exploring a deserted island. really had amazing views or whatever this thing was. Yeah, pretty nice views. I mean look at that. Check out this giant conch shell I just found on the beach. It's so heavy. are back to 
collect us. Everyone's in the mood to hang out nearby in the super chill little beach town of So Tours. Thanks guys! Before we really get our lime on, we're going to grab a late lunch nearby. Pretty, huh? Every time we go somewhere in Grenada, the journey to the destination is always an experience. I never get tired of people watching and trying to imagine what life is like for Grenadian natives. I'm so grateful we've had the chance to travel off the beaten path, and it's all thanks to our friends. Were you really? <laughs> I was thinking. That's so gross, but you felt it or you knew you were? I just felt it. <laughs> 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 